Welcome to Carbon's DIY Garage. If you've been subscribed to the channel, you know that this 2014 Chrysler 200 is a, a new purchase, still working through getting it all in good running order. If this is uh, the first video for you for my vehicle, then you should go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go look at some previous videos and a lot more content to come. So now's a great chance. Pause the video, hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up because you know you're going to like it, and come on back. All right, so what are we doing today? Well, this vehicle wobbles like um, nothing else when you're driving it around. These shocks are on all four corners are just completely shot. Uh, vehicle's only got 147 or so thousand miles on it, but I think it's had some pretty heavy use in its lifetime. Not exactly sure, but um, anyway, I need to replace the suspension on all four corners. And all four corners of this vehicle, again, it's a 2014, they are all um, coil over strut type uh, arrangements. You could probably use a, um, a spring compressor and pull the springs off and just replace the shocks, but I'm gonna go with some TRQ uh, assemblies that I can just more or less drop in, and I'm gonna show you how that's gonna be done. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, I'll show you how to do it here on the front on this side, and then I'll show you how to do it on the back. Um, and both sides should be identical, but of course, as always, any tips, tricks, lessons learned, I'll be sure to show them to you. But let's dive right in and start taking this out. To give you the lay of the land here at the top of the strut uh, shock tower, uh, in the engine compartment are three nuts that you're going to loosen and remove at the end, and that will actually let this whole thing drop out. But first, you're going to remove this bolt so that we get some slack on the speed sensor wiring. We're going to remove this bracket off of the... The, the shock uh, assembly so that the brake line is free and then you also need to move this over to the new um, strut. We've got uh, the two main big bolts and nuts that are actually holding the steering knuckle onto the shock and then we also have the uh, sway bar link to um, disconnect and then that'll just uh, move on over to the, the new shock. So maybe my Jeeps have trained me well, but um, just because I don't know the life of this car before I got it, I'm going to go ahead and hit all of those nuts and bolts I just talked about with some PB blaster, let it sit for just a little bit so hopefully everything comes off nicely. With a 15 millimeter socket, I'm going to go ahead and just break the torque on these to make sure that they'll come apart. Uh, definitely not going to take the nuts off at this point. One word of caution, you might be tempted, hey, there's a nut right there, let's loosen it or take it out. Do not do that. That is what's keeping the whole spring compressed and um, it really would be dangerous if you took this nut off. Now we're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to completely remove this bolt and this bolt. And then we'll go ahead and remove this uh, bottom bolt to get the bracket off of the strut. And maybe you didn't need to remove this one, but I prefer to do it just so I have extra slack on the uh, speed sensor line. And I went ahead and put the bolts back where they came from so I don't worry about losing them here in the garage. Removing this uh, sway bar link is a two-handed operation. You need a 15 millimeter wrench to get the nut off, but you need to hold it in place with a five millimeter internal hex. Uh, before I do the two tools, I'm gonna just put a 15 millimeter socket over the nut and try to break the torque free. And hopefully I can do that and the internal hex won't spin. Now's a great opportunity to inspect your sway bar links, um, see if those might also need to be replaced. Um, and you, you can see here the boots actually separated on mine, so now I'm having regrets. I could have bought the kit that uh, includes new links, but I didn't, so I'm going to have to put this on a future projects list. may not even make a video because uh, it's really easy to get this nut off. And there's another one at the other end of the link, and you do it exactly the same way. Um, so. Maybe lesson learned here is if you're going to do this job, go ahead and spend the extra money to replace the links anyway because they're pretty easy to take on and off. Once you replace these uh, shock or strut assemblies, you're going to have to take your vehicle to the shop and get it aligned. Um, but I'm not going to be able to do that today. So one thing I want to do 
is really do my best to match the measurements um, of these two bolts on the new strut that I install so that the alignment is as close to it as it is right now. And of course, I don't know if the vehicle's actually perfectly aligned right now, so I have to take it to the shop anyway, but I wanna try to mimic what is on here right now the best I can. So the, the new part probably isn't exactly the same dimension. So measuring distances from inside the vehicle to, the, to these bolt locations may not be the best way to do it. So what I'm doing is I marked with my favorite paint, which is um, some nail polish, where the center of the bolts are located on these two uh, bolt holes. And on the new strut, this bottom location is slotted. So the, the knuckle can, can move in and out and then that affects your camber. So I wanna get the bolts in the same dimensional alignment as they are right now. So what I'll do is I'll measure from the center of this hole to the bottom of that uh, top line and to the top of that bottom line and then I can ch match those measurements on the new part and then I can know exactly where I want the bottom bolt to be located. And another thing that I'm doing is that I have my uh, angle finder attached to the face of the rotor and getting the angle of the rotor and you can see it's, uh, it's exactly 90 degrees. And so I also want to match this measurement when I get it all assembled. So if I put the bolts in the same place that they are right now relative to each other, and honestly they look like they're pretty much straight up and down then this angle should be 90 degrees again. And that means that uh, the alignment is pretty much exactly what it is right now with these old parts. Again, I'm not saying that uh, this alignment is perfect, but it should be good enough until I can get it over to the shop. You need a 21 millimeter socket to get these bolts off. And of course, 21 millimeter is pretty much the only socket size I don't have. So I'm going to be using a 13 sixteenths. Uh, socket and uh, it's just uh, a little bit tight, but it'll fit over top of that You're pretty much gonna have to pound these bolts out uh, no matter which technique you use leave the nuts on so you're actually hitting on the nut and then or the nut is protecting the threads some people will leave the nuts uh, kind of lined up with the end of the thread and just uh, hitting on this entire surface with the hammer some people will use a punch a center punch and just punch through a uh, punch on the center of the bolt if you're going to use the punch technique, I would extend the nut out a bit more so that only a couple threads are engaged and that way you're, you're sure your punch isn't going to hit the, the threads of the bolt. Also be careful with the speed sensor line here. Don't uh, hit it with the hammer and same with the brake line. Just uh, be really careful around these lines. Why do you have to punch them out? And that is because they are, I forget what these are called, these serrations at the end of the uh, bolt, but they're essentially pressing into the, uh, the knuckle. And so you definitely need to uh, give them some motivational force to, to get them out. You're not gonna be able to extract them just by pulling out them by hand. With the bolts removed, you can now separate the uh, suspension from the steering knuckle. Just like that. And now it is freed from the bottom. And now we'll go up top and remove the nuts holding the whole strut assembly in place. Back up top side, we are gonna go ahead and remove two of these nuts and loosen a third one, but not remove it completely. So the only reason I said not to remove this uh, third nut is because that will totally free up the whole assembly. So make sure you've got a hand in the wheel well on the spring to grab it when it drops down. I just want to show you guys what I'm talking about with respect to these measurements. So these are the center of the bolts that I measured on the old strut. And what I then did is I took my ruler and I measured the distance 
from that bottom of the bolt hole at that center mark to the top and bottom of the bolt hole at those center marks to, to get a distance. And you can see that on the old strut, these are just uh, two perfectly bolt through holes. On the new strut, uh, I again made a mark at the bottom of the center of the bolt hole um, for the top bolt, but the bottom bolt is a slot. And as you put your ruler in the exact right spot here on the bottom one, you can actually uh, pivot around that center point until you get the area, the spot where the measurements that you took on the other strut uh, are ex exactly in alignment with the top and bottom of these holes because these holes, even though it's a slot, the, the size of the diameter of this slot is still the same size to, to align with that bolt. And so I went ahead and measured. It was two and 20 sixteenths and three and eight sixteenths from the bottom on that other strut. And then like I showed, I pivoted the ruler until um, the eight sixteen, the 20 sixteenths and eight sixteenths exactly aligned um, within the best margin of error I could get made pencil marks, and then I'll go ahead and use my nail polish uh, to just reinforce where these are located. And that'll help me get this uh, aligned as best as I possibly can on my own before taking it to the shop. Just to give you a slightly broader tour of these two parts, they are basically identical, which is great. Uh, but you can see the old one, it's really chewed up here at the spring uh, isolator at the top. And the new one, of course, comes with a big warning label to not remove that uh, nut on the top. And then there's another warning label down there that says, uh, install the top first loosely and then rotate the bottom to get it lined up with the knuckle because uh, the top part really only goes on one way. And then this whole uh, bottom part is designed to pivot uh, so you can get it all lined up. So let's go ahead and put the new one in the vehicle. And the first thing we're gonna do is uh, stick it through the top and get those uh, three nuts. And you can see it comes with uh, its own fresh nuts, so you don't need to reuse the old ones. Get those nuts loosely installed so that it's hanging, and uh, we'll go from there. With it just barely hanging from above, we'll go ahead and get the steering knuckle inside the slots here on the strut and get the bolts in. One thing I want to point out is that you can and probably need to lift up on the control arm on the bottom to get it all to line up uh, to get in the bolt hole. To get things out of the way a bit, I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, brackets for the hoses now that the knuckle is installed in the strut. Just to demonstrate a little bit with the slot here for the bottom bolt, the uh, you actually do have a lot of motion that you can put into this. And so what I'll end up doing is just holding this in position like this and uh, when I put the nut on and when I snug it up. So remember these bolts need to be drawn in uh, and they'll be really tight. So I've got a, um, a wrench here on the, the backside on the head of the bolt just to hold it while I get it started to draw it in. And then I'll get it snug, but uh, not tight and definitely not torqued. For this bottom bolt, uh, you can't see it in the frame, but I have my angle finder again on the rotor um, and, and it's set at 90 degrees right now and I, I've been moving the um, knuckle back and forth in the slot to get it to where it's 90 degrees and that is also lining up with the center line. So it looks like my other thought that you could use the angle finder to maintain the, um, the alignment. Uh, that should also work. But um, I'm getting this all set up before I even put the nut on because as soon as you start squeezing this together, it's gonna to be even more difficult to get this all moved around. So to get it all set up first and then just to hold it in place as you're starting to put the nut on. Thank you. 
Now that we've got those two bolts snugged up, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect the sway bar link. Now with that, we can go ahead and torque everything. I'm not gonna bore you with that. You guys know how to use a torque wrench. The torque for this is 35 foot-pounds. The torque for both of these bolts is 103 foot-pounds. And then uh, once these are done, we'll go ahead and go up top and tighten and torque those bolts. All right, everything down below is tightened and torqued. Now we're just gonna tighten these bolts up and torque them to 41 foot-pounds, and then we will be done. Passenger side is done, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go do the driver's side. It should be exactly the same, and then we'll get started on the rear. Well, fast forward half an hour, because that's how long it took me to do the driver's side without taking video and after having the experience of doing it on the passenger side, it only took me a half hour to uh, get everything in and out. So now we're at the rear. I've got the, uh, the front end is down on the ground. The rear end is up in the air. Again, the jack stands are under, not, not under the um, control arms because the control arms need to be able to move up and down as we replace this hardware. But I'm looking at the trunk. Why is that? Because this carpet needs to come out and then the uh, side carpet pieces also need to come out because we remove and replace the rear shock strut towers uh, through the trunk. So first let's go ahead and get the trunk carpet out. So that was obviously easy because your spare tire is underneath that piece and so you need to be able to get that in and out pretty quickly. These side pieces also come out really easily. There's nothing holding them up. They're just tucked up uh, underneath the other um, carpet pieces, but there is a uh, a trim pull tab thing here on each side that you have to remove. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. And now we'll do the same thing on the driver's side. So on each side, these are the two nuts you're gonna have to remove. There's one here that's really easy to get to from the back. And there's one back here, which might be a pain to get to from the back, but because the back seats lay down flat, it's really easy to come in through the back seats and get access to these, I think. So with the vehicle supported on jack stands and the control arm hanging free, we're gonna go ahead and remove the nut that is attaching the shock to the control arm. And so that's this 18 inch 18 millimeter socket um, for both the nut and the bolt head. So 18 millimeter wrench here and 18 millimeter socket on the other side. So I'm gonna use the jack to just put a little bit of upward tension, upward force on the control arm because the next thing we're gonna do is remove the nuts on the top of the shock and this way there's not um, a whole bunch of tension pushing, pulling down and making it difficult to remove those nuts. All right, so now just uh, two 15 millimeter nuts to get off. I have ratcheting box wrenches, um, so it's really easy to just get it on here. And it's easy to break the torque. These should be really in good shape because um, there really shouldn't be any rust back here. Now that those nuts are off, we'll lower the jack, get the jack out of the way, get this uh, lower bolt out, and then the whole assembly should uh, come down. So make sure it doesn't drop, uh, grab onto it, but the whole thing should come down and be able to pull it out.
So after I got the bolt out and uh, used a pickle fork there at the end to just get it the rest of the way out, it does come down, but um, the t very tip of the fastener or the bolt up there on the shock is still lodged up in here. So you just need to push the control arm down a little bit to let it come loose. Installation is the reverse of removal. So we're gonna stick the uh, top up in there first. Notice that there is a rounded side and a pointy side to the top. The pointy side goes out towards the world. The rounded side goes in towards the middle of the, uh, the vehicle. So we're just gonna stick this up there through the top holes and then we're gonna put the bolt in through the shock uh, hole and uh, that should get us all lined up. So I'm gonna to torque this to 73 foot-pounds. Back inside, we'll go ahead and install these nuts and then torque them to 41 foot-pounds. That is it for the driver's side. Um, didn't take very long, maybe 20 minutes total. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the passenger side. It's gonna be the exact same thing. You don't need to watch that. I'm gonna throw the carpet back in and uh, put the vehicle back on the ground, take it for a drive, and then uh, wrap it up by telling you if this whole process was actually worth it and this thing is no longer swaying in the breeze. Well, the Chrysler 200's out of the garage, the Caravan and Hound, the JKU, are back in the garage because all four corners of the suspension are done. Took it for a test drive. It rides great. Um, I think it uh, really was worth the effort to redo all that suspension. Um, it's really not that hard of a job. I would say bookkeep an hour to do the first corner, probably a half hour for every other corner. I would start with the front because it's more difficult than the back. The back is really pretty easy. Um, go slow. Hope this video has been helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel because there's definitely more content to come for the Chrysler and then also these vehicles behind me as well. Uh, not to mention TDSR who's stuck outside all the time. Anyway, until that next video, have a good one.